Hello, my name is Simon Skinner, I'm a Microsoft MVP, and today we're going to walk through the installation of Service Provider Foundation, or SPF. So there's various reasons why we would use SPF, but our core interest is, is around Windows as your pack. So let's have a look how we actually go about to install the um, SPF, Service Provider Foundation. Well, first of all, what we need to do is have a look at our Active Directory, because we're going to create some additional accounts. Now I've already done that in advance and you can see that I have four accounts and one user group. So I need an account per web service that I'm going to be asked for and I'm going to have a group where I can put whoever has access to that inside that group. Now obviously you can see that I'm doing this through a domain and that makes sense to do it through a domain. So um, we also have a, a couple of other things that we need to take care of and one of those things is around the SQL Server. So what I've actually done here is I've created an instance on my SQL Server, so then I can specify exactly how I want it for my installation. And when we do um, Windows is your pack, it's going to ask us to do SQL authentication and Windows authentication. So I don't want to change my main SQL Server for that, so I create an instance specifically. Because I've done that, it's changed the port number, so I need to clock that port number ready for my installation. But now I'm ready to go, so let's actually have a look at the installation of SPF. Well, one of the first things is, where do we actually get the installation files from? Well, they're actually on the Windows System Center 2012 R2 Orchestrator Setup Disk. So you can see it on the bottom right-hand corner, we've got standalone installations. And then you can see Service Provider Foundation. And that's where we start our installation from. So I click on Service Provider Foundation and it will open up the wizard which is familiar to us because it's the standard installation uh, wizard that we're seeing across the whole of the System Center suite now. So there's nothing else to do at this point other than click Install. So then it goes to the standard EULA which I would have to agree to to continue forward. So now I have my prerequisites. Now there's quite a few prerequisites in the SPF provider. So I've taken care of those beforehand because I've gone through the documentation. I know what I need to uh, um, put in there additionally. But let's just have a quick look at that. So if I just open up for my add and remove programs, I can see that I've had to add WCF Data Services 5.0, Microsoft ASP.NET MVC4, both of those can be downloaded from the internet and I'll be doing a blog post to complement this video and they'll have the links for those. But they're the only two external programs that you'll need to download. But additionally, you'll also need the Microsoft System Center 2012 R2 Virtual Machine Manager console installed. So I have those installed and as you can see up in the top right hand corner here, I also have my Virtual Machine Manager console installed. So with all my prerequisites, I'm ready to go. So I can click Next, and it's asking me about my SQL Server. Well, I'll put in the SQL Server that I'd already prepared, and I put in the um, instance, and I'll also put in the port number. Don't click for using dynamic port unless you're going to use the standard uh, instance or the standard SQL Server, so leave that unchecked if you're using an instance. This is the database name that's been chosen for us. It's, it's correctly named, so I'm happy to leave it like this. SC SPF Database System Center Service Provider Foundation DB. So I'm happy we can click Next. So now we're looking at uh, around the configuration of our actual IIS. This is actually kind of an important screen. First of all, we can say uh, where we want to have the installation files. Well, by default, it's the int pub, which is standard for IIS, so I'm kind of happy to leave that. But around the port number, now the port number by default is 8090. If you want to change that, now's the time. You will not be able to change it afterwards. The only way that you can actually change it is by uninstalling the service provider foundation and reinstalling it again. We'll also need some server certificates, so we can use um, a generated self-certificate, which Windows will create for us, or we can import one 
which will make it an existing certificate. I've opted for that option because I'm using a wild card and I can use that across my whole of my Windows to Seal Pack installation. It just makes things a little bit easier. So now I'm ready to move on to the next screen. I'll click next. Now this is where it's asking me for those service um, service accounts that I'd uh, already created in Active Directory, but it's defaulting here by the active uh, by the administrator of this server. But I want to change that to SPSPFGRP, which is the group that I created, which means that I can put in the users that I want that will have access to this, and I'm going to control those via a group. Now it defaults for the application pool installation to uh, network service. Network service in many, many cases is a very safe um, service to use because it relies on a computer name, which is basically impossible to spoof two computers of the same name on a Microsoft network uh, domain. But Microsoft in this case are actually asking us to use service accounts. Now here they've gone straight for the administrator account. I'm not really happy with that. So what I've actually done is I've created, as you saw in the Active Directory, um, some users already. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add those in. And I'll add in the username and password for that. OK, so I'm ready to go for the, uh, the web service account. And that's going to take us on to another uh, domain account that needs to be created. So I have to go through the whole process again. And in fact, I'm going to have to go through it several times. So I'll just add those in now. And this one's the web provider. So that's the user account I'll add. Then I'll add in the password. And I'm ready to go on that one. So what I'm going to do, just to save time, copy and paste that, because I'm going to need it again in the next page. And again, create a service account. This one's for the VMM web service. And it means that this will need to have access to the uh, VMM console. So we'll need to add this account into the VMM admin so they actually have access. So I just add that in there. And then I'll copy in the password. And finally, I'll just copy that because we're going to be asked for it one more time. I click on next. And now we've got the usage web service. I'll just adding my group. Click on my network service account, my service account, sorry. Um, and then I'll just copy my um, account across. So actually what I'm doing here, just so you know, is I'm using a, uh, a third party uh, piece of software called KeyPass, where I store all my passwords um, and I can store my accounts. And you can just use a copy paste feature like that, which makes it a little bit easier for us. So then I can click on next. Now it's asking me how to improve the Microsoft System Center uh, Foundation experience. So I'm given a couple of choices here. Well, most definitely I want to use the Microsoft updates because that's recommended. Um, but now I've got a choice around I'm willing to participate or I'm not willing to participate. If you know about this program and you're happy about it, go ahead and make your decision. If not, if you're unclear about this program, click on this link and it will tell you more about the program or just make your choice. I think the majority of people are going to say no, but I'm going to say yes because the information helps make the product better for people, for you, for us, for everybody. So then I click next. So now it's come to an installation summary. So it's summarizing everything that I've made, all the choices that I've made, including all my service accounts, etc. Um, and then I can click on install. So what I'll do is when I click on install, I'm going to pause the video because I'm sure you don't want to really run through the, uh, 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 the green progress bar with me. And then at the end, I'll show you how, that's, uh, how that worked out. Now, as we can see, that our installation is complete. Um, we've got a green tick. All is good. So we can click uh, close on that. So let's just have a quick look to see what's actually taken place. 
First of all, we'll open up our IIS where we'll see our additional web services. So we'll open up the web server, go to sites, and we can see there's a new folder SPF and underneath we have three additional resources. So we know that the SPF web services have been installed correctly. What we'll also equally do is just have a quick look at the SQL server and we can see that our SCSPF database has been installed with all of the tables. So that finally um, summarizes our installation of uh, SPF. Thank you very much for, for watching. Um, there will be some more videos in this series which will be around the installation of Windows Azure Pack. So hopefully we'll see you back soon. Thanks very much. Bye.